So the big question is if retail is here to stay or not. And that's a big question. And of course, it's here to stay. But the question is how and what. And I would like to drill down to be a little bit more specific about it. I'm hearing a lot of stuff around. And I'd like to sum it up in some way. <clears throat> and I hope it will be, sorry, I hope it will be clear to everybody. And, and hope you, everybody can benefit from this uh, perspective. Uh, so first of all, yes, retail is here to stay. And the question is what do you do with a certain... Uh, type of boxes that we have. If it's a big box, if it's a shopping center, if it's a strip center like this or like that, the shopping mall, what do we do with them? And uh, the solutions seem to be the following. First of all, uh, you can't give up on that. You can't give up on retail. People will go out and continue shopping. And the question is the tenant mix. We had that discussion when the e-commerce came in, when Amazon came in and pretty much crushed the market of retail. And we knew that it was first of all it was a huge shakeup, and nobody really knew where this thing is going, and uh, is retail over or not? And now we know that it's not, and now we know that it's really the question of tenant mix. But then came the coronavirus. It was like a sort of a knockout, knockout to the to to this market. And what did it do? And where are we holding right now? And that's a big question. And what do we do with it? And that's a huge question. So, if let's say for example. There are big box retailers. A person has a, 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 how do you say, a shopping center or a sort of a strip mall that is very, very large, let's say 100,000 square foot or more. And the, outs, the outside boxes are big boxes. And they used to be Sears, JCPenney's, and all these guys. And at a certain point, um, at a certain point, or, or, or whatever it was, or whatever business was, came out, whatever it was that went under. And now these big boxes are empty. What do we do with them? Is there any hope for them? And the answer is, yes, there is. You have to look around you and you have to see that there are businesses that are succeeding. You have businesses like Target, like uh, Hobby Lobby, like Costco, like, um, uh, like, like Walmart. You have businesses that are successful and you have to try to uh, look out and reach out to them because they are looking for more locations. They are looking for more locations. They are looking to spread out. Some of them are more than others, of course. But you have to have the relationships and you have to use that relationship. You have to use whatever, uh, whatever abilities you have, whatever knowledge base you have, whatever connections you have in order to get to those guys, in order to see if you can get them. That's the first thing I would do for big box retail. If it's a smaller shop, smaller thing, uh, the question would be, how do we take it and, and maybe combine it to one store? Let's say you have a strip center, you had all kinds of little stores with a nail salon, with whatever it was, with moms and pops, and it's there. And the question is, if you could take this whole thing, for example, I'm just giving a creative idea, let's say, and you create out of it, meaning instead of having, let's say, four or five shops, you just do one supermarket. Everybody buys food today. Uh, can you do that? Is there any client for that? Look out for that client. Meaning there are ways to survive. There are ways to thrive out of that situation. So again, until now, I spoke about big box retailers, take out the losers, big bring in the winners, like Costco, like uh, Target, etc. And try to see what you can do in order to work with them with a long-term type of relationship that they can be happy with. And maybe they're looking for a spot in your location. So that is one aspect. Another aspect is, again, taking a strip center that is failing and turning into something that is useful today, like supermarkets, people go to buy food and try to get that done. That's another idea. Another idea is to go and turn it into light industrial. Okay, something like, for example, that is obviously the square footage, meaning the, the, the uh, rent per square foot you're going to get is much, much lower, but it's much better than getting zero. And the, at that point, you can get a loser to a winner. You get something that is, is, is an eyesore and bring it into a place where you can be really useful for everybody to use. You can bring light industrial, maybe the whole retail move to another area or just diminished in that area. And you just take that light industrial. Maybe there's a need for car shops, for this, for that. I don't know what, for, uh, for uh, Northern Tools. I have no idea which business, you name it. And to put it there in that place and to make that center thrive again maybe with lower uh, uh, rent per square foot but it's, thri it's thriving again so that's another idea <clears throat> especially taking let's say a big box and turning it into a lot of slots of light industrial or something like that 
maybe have industrial, maybe a warehouse, maybe, maybe someone's looking for a warehouse. Right now, today, the warehouses are winners, are winners. Today, in this economy, today, everybody's doing online, everybody's doing e-commerce, everybody's ordering. Maybe you can take that big thing and turn it into a warehouse. Uh, in, a lot of people are, are reluctant, used to be reluctant about making warehouses because they said, okay, if Amazon, let's say, comes and they want a warehouse, I don't know if I want to do a warehouse because um, then I have to make it fitting to their needs. And if they leave, I am stuck with something that nobody wants and then I have to redo everything from scratch. Now is the time to do it because anyways, you're not getting any rent. Anyways, nothing is happening. You're getting that and you're putting in something creative. You're putting a warehouse for a company that is looking for a warehouse because they have a lot of orderings and in your area, they don't have a spot where they need to go and distribute. And that will be a great thing for them and maybe you can find it. You have to be creative. So prior to being a loser, you can find a way to being a winner. Prior to, meaning instead of being some, someone who says, listen, I'm done. I'm out of it, I'm selling it, or I'm, I'm just out of it, I'm declaring bankruptcy, try that first if you can. Another idea, uh, which everybody's talking about nowadays, is that there's a huge demand for, for places for rent. A lot of people either lost their house, moving out of their house, for class A and class B especially, people want, there's a need for multifamily. Maybe you can take this eyesore that you have over there and turn it into multifamily. Maybe it's time to get out of bed and get out of your, what you call the misery, get out of the bad place where you are, or uh, you know, the, the, the place that you I mean, definitely justified, uh, and go and try to rezone it. Take someone to rezone it, take someone with you, maybe take a partner who knows how to do multifamily and has some cash in their pocket and to tell them, here's my property, I'll do it, let's split the, the profit on it, let's, let's be partners this is the time to do it. Maybe someone with new energies will come in and actually do it with you. So what I'm trying to say is that there are ideas to do things. Don't, you can't give up on things. You have to try to think creatively and try to get things done. So retail is not dead. Ret Guys, I'm trying to quiet my kids here. Retail is not dead. Retail is very much alive and, and right now it's in big trouble. It's in big trouble. Think positive, guys. Think outside of the box because the future is there. There is a future. There is a future. You got to get it done. You guys take care. Have a beautiful day.